house of God. Uh -huh. Sell for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Okay. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Right? Right. Okay, watch this. in this last day, the mass high is raising up the two prophets of God. Read it again for the brother. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. So brother, what the officer explained to you is that what we going over is the importance of color. Okay, this image, brother, what's your name, brother? What's going on, brother? Ray? Therese, what's going on, Therese? My name is Ephraim. So what I'm trying to show the importance of is imagery. Okay, because in the churches we know we kind of strayed away from them because they're not teaching us the truth. Would you agree or disagree? Exactly. I'm with you. So that's why we that's why I be reading. Thus saith the Lord. So what we showing is that the so-called white man did what? Read it again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. The word devil means deceive. Okay. So it deceive this devil deceive people that's among the earth. Read by the means of those miracles which he had power to do because a lot of people think that the so-called white man has a lot of miracles he uh some of the examples could be that um space space travel you know what i'm saying that he was slaves hold on i'm gonna deal with that but let me, let me get to the point okay i'm gonna deal with that but let me finish just because with your children you said do I understand God? Let's see what the Bible says. Because we won't know about God if it wasn't for the book. So let's see what God says. Psalm chapter 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the first thing with God is to understand him, you got to have fear. Meaning what? If God says to do something, out of fear you do that. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So a good understanding have all they that do do not know not hear not read but do his commandments read it again from the top the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom a good understanding have all day that do his commandments you understand that brother understand that's this ain't healthy for us bro they gotta understand and see greatness in themselves that's why i'm trying to show you the importance of this of the image okay so the so-called white man read that read that part again by the means of those miracles by which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. They should do what? Make an image. This started during the Renaissance era, era okay? They read this image up as Jesus Christ, but this is found nowhere in the Bible. I challenge anybody out here, show this image right here in the Bible. You can't because it's not in there. Read. Image to the beast, uh -huh. which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image. So, so this so-called white man had power to give life to this image. You ever heard of the Dark Ages? Who ruled during the Dark Ages? No, 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 Chinese, brother. Why you think about it? Why do they say Dark Ages? Okay, I agree with the first part. Okay, so we rule during the during the dark ages. You understand? So-called black people. You understand what I'm saying?
Right, because religion is man-made. He had a sad face when he had to tell his congregation and all his students that the original bone marrow turned out to be black, and when they put the face putty on, okay. they respecting the graves, and they pulled up and putty their face. They came with black lips and black nose, so they were black. All of the ancient ones out the uh, pyramids and everything else in the east. Got you. So let's finish, let's finish on to this, all right? I'm not going to forget your point either, but let's finish on to this so they can understand the truth. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So the white man had power to give image to this beast, read, because they came over during the Renaissance era. They now made this image as Jesus Christ. This is what the world worship, worships today. In every church you go to, they got a, a, a white image reared up, but it's found nowhere in the Bible, read. That the image of the beast should both speak. That it should what? Both speak. This image speaks how? It's all through TV. It's all in your churches. It's all on the commercials, radio stations. They put this image in our heads, but at the end of the day, this was forced on us in slavery. This ain't found no way in the Bible. Read. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So those people that do what? The people that don't want to give reverence to this, it said that they got killed, especially with the Northern Kingdom. Especially with the Northern Kingdom, what happened? When Ponce de Leon came over in 1492, when Christopher Columbus came over, what did they do? They forced this image on us, and if we ain't accept it, with the, uh, if we didn't accept it, they murdered us. Right. Because what came with this image is a religion called Christianity. Right. That's what's populating the Christian churches today. But this ain't, but guess what? Christianity teaches you what? Do as you want, come as you are. You understand? Christianity is against the Bible. We got to understand that. This image coming with Christianity keeps you in sin. Keeps your children in ignorance. Because they're not knowing the truth according to the Bible. That this book is full of great black men that ruled the earth at one time. We descended from a royal lineage of people. And it's high time that we wake up. Give me Romans 13 and 11. It's high time that we wake up and come back to our rightful spot as the black man, as the Israelite man, and not the black man. You understand? It's Terrence, right? Terrell. You understand, Brother Terrell? It, these things is important, brother, because your kids gotta know this. Read that. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Uh -huh. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time that to wake out of sleep. And that knowing the time, uh -huh. that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. Uh -huh. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen in your life, how old are you, brother, if you don't mind me asking? 36? Okay. In your, in your 36 years of life, have you ever been living in, in, a, uh, in a condition where you've seen food shortages? No, not really. That's a sign of the end times. Salvation is drawn nigh. These are the woes that must come upon earth, but these things must happen. These are, the, these, are the, these are the signs that's happening to show that we're in the last days. Here it is, we got shootings happening left and right. The, the, the shooting in, uh, in uh, Buffalo, New York. Okay, the shooting that just took place at the elementary school in Texas. These woes must happen. So God, give me that Hosea 5.15. These things must happen. It's unfortunate to those that it happened to, but these things must happen for our people to come out of that sleep, to come out of that spiritual slumber to realize that, you know what? This system is not for me. You understand? This government is not for me. Read that. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Uh -huh. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their offense. So let me ask you a question. If God said he's going to go and return to his place and until we acknowledge our offense, what is some of the offenses you think it is that we, that we got to turn from? Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, Blessed, Deacon Abiel here. We are here in Kumasi, Ghana, and I am completely blown away. As you can see behind me, we have the new school. It's in construction. It's being built from the ground up. Everybody's putting their brick in, y'all. It's your turn. Donate, donate, donate. As you can see where your money go. We're not pocketing your money. We're not driving expensive cars. We are doing the work Most High God put in our heart to do, just like in the book of Nehemiah. You guys out there in all the countries watching, you've been the key to this taking place. Without your donations and your help, we wouldn't be where we're at now. You understand? The Lord says, as you know in Ezekiel, build sanctuaries. This is the first of many Lord's will that we're building. 
put your brick in. We need your donations. We need your help. As you all see, this right here is fulfillment of prophecy. The scripture says that this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached unto the whole world as a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. What you see right here is fulfillment of prophecy. Put your brick in, twiddle your thumbs. Those of you all that's not here, ain't boots on the ground, you have a way to help. Say again, brother. All your negative and polished wishes. All, all your negatives. So according to the Bible, a negative is a sin. Okay, you're right, bro. But I'm just biblically defining it as sin, meaning breaking God's commandments. Finish reading. And seek my face in their affliction. And the only time we tend to go to God is when what? When we ain't got money to pay rent. When we when we down on our uh, when we just got fired from our job. You understand? When we get cur when we get smitten with a, a sickness. Some people, that, but these are the times that we most of the time draw near to God. Aside from that, unless you financially off well. Oh, thank God for this, thank God for that. You understand what I'm saying? But God put us in these conditions. He's allowing these things to happen so that way during these times of affliction, we can come back to him. Read it. And seek my place in their affliction. How do you see God's face? I said seek his face, not see his face. Seek it, yes sir. Seek the face is just simply reading the Bible. Because prime example, and I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not making a statement brother to belittle you. But if you, if you were seeking the face, your kids would understand that Christ is a black man. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So what's, what's, what's raising them? I'm listening. My point was playing itself. Okay. As you go through, you're going to have stages and understand it. Uh -huh. What comprehends to you? What's, what's official to you? What's rich to you? What's, when you keep getting those understand, you learn every day. Okay. You teach every day, whether you know it or not. Okay. You might have a message that's not for me to get pushed to somebody else too. But like God works through your faith. So okay. I'm still not done. Okay. Now, on the understanding of what I said in the beginning, Hold on, hold on, I want to deal with that, bro. I want to dodge that stuff. Okay. You can say one, two, bro. Yeah, don't need you. I understand what I want you to do to begin. We are read these things, but you're supposed to go back and seek this yourself. You're supposed to begin that book and finish that book. You talk about the scriptures, right? Yeah. Understood. On my side, the way I act and push apart. So, do you believe in the Bible? I believe in a lot. I believe in energy and energy. No, I'm saying as far as the Bible, I understand. I believe I'm in a lot. I'm not saying I believe that whole book. A man wrote that. A man wrote it. Give me Psalm 68 and 11. He might have pushed the word to him, or him to do it to him, but a man still wrote it. Regardless so what man wrote it? I don't know. I'm gonna tell you, bro. These are the Christian uh, mentality uh, statements that we make. Because, well, hold on, hold on. I let you. I let you give your piece. These statements that we give that is, that a, that a man wrote this book. These is all rhetorics that we, uh, uh, we we tend to give out in ignorance. And again, I'm not saying this to belittle you, brother. You my brother. But I was just like you at one point in time. I had no faith in this book. I felt like this book, hold on. I'm just going off of what you just said. You just stated that. You never let me finish. I still, I got a long statement to give you so you get to understand the before we go back to where you want to go at. I'm just going with the scripture say. Read it. Psalm chapter 68 verse 11. The Lord gave the word. No man gave the word. The Lord gave the word. The word is these laws. Read. Great was the company of those that published it. Who published the words? You got many famous forefathers. You got Ezekiel, Jeremiah, right. Daniel, right. Exodus 24 and 4. Right. Daniel, Christ himself, the apostles. These men were moved by the spirit to write this book. So it wasn't written by no carnal man because when we when we when we give the when we say that the Bible is written by man, we instantly that's an instant statement saying that this has nothing to do with me. Are you meant to understand that? I don't understand what you're saying, but that statement. Do you understand God? I understand keeping the commandments. That's all. Matter of fact, give me yeah. I, on, I can I ask you a question. God is on such a level. Psalms 111 and 10. You said do I understand God? God is on such a level you can't understand. Psalms 111 and 10. 
You said, do I understand God? Let's see what the Bible says. Because we won't know about God if it wasn't for the book. So let's see what God said. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the first thing with God is to understand him, you got to have fear. Meaning what? If God says to do something, out of fear you do that. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So a good understanding have all they that do. Do, not know, not hear, not read, but do his commandments. Read it again from the top. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. You understand that, brother? I understand. Hold on. I want to make sure that you challenge the Bible and not challenging me. I'm not challenging the word of God. I'm just trying to make sure you understand. Nobody can. Nobody. Okay, so you understand what the scripture says. Okay. That's why I say God is on a higher understanding where you can't get there. The Quran tell you take from what you can understand. So that's what it is. You a Muslim? No, I'm not. Okay. So you so you just study a lot of different denominations. You're supposed to study before you choose. Thank you. Thank you. Please ask twelve twelve. Brother, so listen. Un studying all these different denominations is no yeah, benefit. Oh, I never said anything was forced upon us. I said this white image, yes, this white image of Jesus was forced upon us. Negative, negative. This was before, brother. This was before. That might have been before, but did you receive this first or did you receive that first? This. Yes. Give me Gen let's, let's go to the root of it. Let's go to the root of it. Genesis 2 and 7. Let's go to the root of it. Let's see what the first man looked like and see if this came first. Hold on, brother. Let God speak. Let's, let God be true with every man a liar. Okay? Let's go to the very beginning of the book and see what the first man looked like. Was it this man or read? Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So in the beginning of the time, God formed man of the dust of the ground. Question. Look at the dust of the ground. What color is it? Brother right here. Is, is what color? Brown. Read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the deeper you dig, the what? The browner it gets. Read. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life is the commandments of God. Who are we reading about right here, brother? Turn to Terrell, right? Therese? Okay, my apologies. Therese, who are we reading about in Genesis 2 and 7? No, I'm saying what man? What was the first man made? Brother, who was the first man made? Adam. Adam. What's your name, brother? Robert. Robert and Therese, right? All right, so Adam was the first man that we're reading about that was made. Read it again for the brother. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Give me the breath of life so we can go. That's, this is why the, the Bible says that precept must be upon precept. When you get stirred up in all these other religions, what you got to understand, brother, my wife used to be in Islam, but she realized it wasn't for her. Because why? It contradicts the scriptures. There's no prophecies in the Quran. So, uh, and I understand you not, but you study them, and that's not beneficial for you. It's no benefit in it, brother. Yeah, you gotta have works. So what's your works? Read. You are man. You are Proverbs chapter seven, verse two. Keep my commandments and live. So God give you discerning spirits to know the truth. There you go. Keep, God, God said, keep my commandments and live. So when God made Adam, he gave him the breath of life. And the what? Read it again. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Brother Therese, you got to keep the commandments, brother. If you're studying all these other religions, brother, just understand that you need to teach the importance of energy to your kids. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.